welcome dear students to this class on introduction to art and literary aesthetics in today's session we'll deal with the painting liberty leading the people by eugene delacro ferdinand victor eugene delacro is a french romantic painter born on 17 april 26 1789 in france He is one of the greatest and most influential French painters. His style was romantic. His use of colors influenced French impressionist painters later on. He used rough but swinging brush strokes, experimented with light and colors. But on the other hand, he neglected proper use of perspective. which uh, was a uh, popular then more than 850 paintings and more than 2000 drawings uh, of uh, eugene delacro is available the subject matter for his paintings uh, were diverse he painted about christ battles women these are a few examples you can take a look at these paintings by eugene the women of algiers borders christ on lake gennesareth these are all a few examples of very interesting paintings by eugene delacro the painting that we need to make an analysis of is liberty leading the people it was painted in 1830 by eugene delacro right after the July revolution which swept Paris that year characterized by its allegorical and political significance this large oil on canvas has become a universal symbol of liberty and democracy this is often used in popular culture to symbolize people's emancipation from oppressive domination It is one of the most famous paintings in the art history. Liberty leading the people actually is about the July Revolution of 1830 when Charles the 10th of France was toppled. You shouldn't confuse this July Revolution with French Revolution of 1789 Delacro was inspired by the events of July Revolution which is known as uh, La Trois Glorieuses in French that was three glorious days you know this uh, riot lasted for these days it's a political upheaval that took place in Paris on 27th 28th and 29th of July 1830 These violent demonstrations took place as the ruling French king Charles II tried to restrain the freedom of the people by executing a constitutional takeover. So this is the background of uh, the painting. The Parisians violently protested against the abuses of their individual rights. They took hold of the city and violent fighting ensued, resulting in high death toll. Charles the 10th eventually abdicated and a constitutional monarchy called the July monarchy was established with Louis Philippe the 1st as the king of the France of France Delacro was not actually a revolutionary himself and did not take part in Paris fighting but rather defined himself as a symbol stroller and he later wrote a letter about this painting to his friend saying that A simple stroller like myself ran the same risk of stopping a bullet as the impromptu heroes who advanced on the enemy with pieces of iron fixed to broom handles. You no, know, he said that you know he didn't take part in the July Revolution, so at least he could paint uh, something on it. In brief, we have an image of a woman. Uh, who is repre- who is representative of divine purity but in social context women were uh, treated with little personal liberty and here in this uh, painting he actually tries to connect 
two different uh, worlds and uh, moreover the painting shows his romantic uh, spirit now he was actually a leading figure of the french romantic school and he wished himself to wish to uh, emancipate himself from the academic arts classical ideals and canons and you know he he actually wanted to uh, paint something very subjective the subject of a painting was a contemporary one whereas canvases of this size were generally reserved for historical paintings but here we find uh, dilaco uh, painting uh, painting about something which was of current uh, relevance so coming to this uh, painting liberty leading the people no uh, we can resort to three methods to analyze uh, the painting uh, this uh, painting can be examined and uh, examined in three different ways you know we can interpret it in any ways that we want you know uh, we can look at it the peripheral meaning then we can look Uh, how it relates to the social and political climate of 19th century europe or especially france so the critics erwin panofsky henrich wolfen arnold hauser you know they all talk about different kinds of interpretations of a painting coming to the first one the pre ethnographical reading of this painting you know it's about what we see in the painting so i hope you have uh, seen this painting uh, it is very popular the large canvas with group of armed individuals and we have a on the foreground we have a female figure holding a a, a flag and a bayonet young boy waving hands equipped with guns no please make a take a look at the painting if you want you can take a print of it and make an analysis of it a critical appreciation of the painting you know at the center of the painting we have this allegorical allegorical depiction of liberty uh actually the name given as marianne mary and and two names which were popular in france so uh, marianne the combination of these two names so represented as marianne a symbol of the republic the woman coiffed with a phrygian cap so look at the cap is a leading uh, is leading a group of revolutionaries her draped yellow dress reveals her breast and recalls the greek goddesses of antiquity you know you can uh, the facial features please uh, make it close and uh, look at the facial features the nose the chin you know her a straight nose plum lips and delicate chin are all reminiscent of antique greek and roman statues she is a tribute to ancient greece the cradle of democracy as well as to the roman republican tradition however dilacro mixes in modern symbols as she holds the tricolor flag in one hand and a banner in the other this way liberty embodies both the modern struggle and antiquities ideology of freedom the painting's pyramidal structure heightens the fighting's momentum the ground is strewn with bodies and out of the mystery and pain liberty stands tall on the remains of the barricade emerging strong and victorious like a great goddess This rigorous composition contains and balances the painter's impetuous brush strokes and creates a striking lighting effect. It's a scene of chaos and energy filled with smoke and movement and yet Dilacro's pyramid successfully creates a sense of order. So you know it's like there is chaos, it's a riot, but we find some sort of order underneath. you know uh, this painting actually recalls a uh, gary calls a raft of medusa that represents violence without idealizing it in the foreground there are two uh, notable figures one is we find a uh, two uh, men and a young boy on the left there is a man with a pistol tucked into his uh, belt he wears a shirt but no jacket his outfit indicates that he belongs to a lower class and the 
Cap proves that he is a revolutionary. He has got revolutionary leanings. Now, please take a closer look at the man behind uh, the man with a coat, black coat. The figure next to the worker wears a bourgeoisie outfit, complete with a top hat, jacket and vest. Delacour clearly suggests that people of all classes came together to fight for a better society. People from the lower class, people from the upper class, the bourgeoisie society, you know, they all fought uh, together against the dominance of uh, the king. The revolution was not about one class fighting another, but it was about the people rallying against a royalist oppression. So that's why, you know, we have liberty leading the people, not just a particular class or a community. Liberty leading the people. On the right side of the canvas, there is a young boy who seems rather wild as he holds uh, not one, but two pistols. You know, look at, uh, look at his hands, you know, there are two pistols. He is a symbol of youthful insurgence and his velvet cap and sachet indicate that he is a schoolboy. So people from all walks of life participated in this uh, riot. He may have been an inspiration for the character of the street urchin Gavrock in Victor Hugo's novel La Miserable. You know, if you have uh, read that novel, you will uh, be reminded of that young boy. And then we find uh, dead bodies strewn all over. Now, have you seen that? The dead bodies of soldiers and citizens on the ground represent the terrible cost of this revolution. These are best summed up by the figure on the left corner who is nude from the waist down and wears only a nightshirt. You know, maybe he was uh, dragged from his bed by the royalist to this terrible fate. The body is very close to the weir, invading our immediate vision. You know, did you see that dead body there? Half naked dead body. So there, so you know that um, that is suggestive of the sacrifices made to earn liberty, to earn freedom for the society. The dead soldiers on the right, that is, it indicates the fall of King Charles. You know, the soldiers on the right hand side. So, there's a just take a closer look at this woman. She's half naked. So, it's actually an emphasis of the female character as well as the reflection of troubles of the civil disorder. Coming to the color tones, red, white and blue color tones prevail, right? Have you seen that? This painting was later purchased by King Louis Fleur to demonstrate his support of the Republican values, but he never exhibited it. And it was returned to Delacroix in 1939 because the revolutionary ideologies behind the painting became perceived as dangerous and potentially inflammatory. It's actually a good reminder of how politicized art was in the 19th century France. I hope you understood the painting, right? So what I want you to do is just uh, go through the lesson on the overview of art and literature. So you will get to know, you will get to know where to place this art, you know, where this romantic art comes, where you can place that and about Eugene Delacroix, the paintings that he used to paint. And coming to this painting, Liberty Leading the People, make a close analysis of the painting. What do you see in the painting and what is hidden from the painting, but what is implied? So we have an allegorical figure liberty uh, symbolized as a woman as a, it's personified liberty is personified as a woman holding a flag and we on the background we have a young boy two men dead bodies shown all over smoke coming you know indicative of uh, that the revolution has come to an end and uh, liberty or freedom liberty came victorious or the fight was successful. So please uh, make a critical appreciation of the painting and you can post it in the Google Classroom.
थैंक यू